Hi folks, I'm Josh Williams with the one and only Fred Miner of Peregrine Safe and Ready. Fred, here we are days before Christmas, or Couple. the holidays to be politically correct, yeah. you have to call it No, I don't have to. I can say Merry Christmas to the world. <laughs> <laughs> there goes those sponsors. I'll wish you my know, Jewish so friends a happy Hanukkah, but right. you know that's where we'll end it. Right on. Um, so Fred here, we have uh, made it through a year. And uh, this is sort this of our, is, yeah. our year wrap up. And I was uh, harassing you, um, as I, I seem to be pretty. You're pretty, pretty good at harassing everybody, right. but you know, yeah, I don't get the exceptional yeah. treatment. And I was going to ask you, what's on the Fred Miner Christmas Christmas wish list? Well, I, c I could give you the, the pat answer and say world peace, but I won't do that. And I'm not going to believe that. <laughs> no, you know, um, from from Fred's no. very private personal standpoint, the only thing I really need is a heavier kettlebell. As, as you know, this week I um, finally got certified as a kettlebell instructor, so I'm looking forward to you know, doing some tutoring there. And for my personal use, I need a heavier kettlebell. But my Christmas, Christmas list this year is pretty short. A couple of books I'd like to get, but if they don't show up under the tree, I'm just gonna go out and buy them myself. See, now, I'm a little disappointed in your, your punting here. You don't yeah. punt very often. I figured there'd be something about Iran uh, there'd be something, you know, something well, about the German Chancellor. If you want, something about no. Ob Barack Obama. You're, yeah. you're really I, well, see, the, here. see, the thing Christmas is, Christmas joy. My, a little bit. I'm trying to keep it light and be happy. And actually, Obama seems to be crashing and burning just fine on his own. So I can just sit back and enjoy that one. Right. That spectacle. I really do hope that more light is shed on the whole Benghazi affair and that Hillary Clinton is pretty much destroyed from being a next presidential candidate. I don't know if that'll happen or not, but I, in my opinion, she should be. Um, I am a little bit concerned with a story you were tracking just a couple of weeks ago with the, they've turned off the uh, desalination plant here in Livingston County. And I would sure like some assurance as the time goes on that we're not polluting our groundwater right. with that, you know, but um, all in all, I am trying to be upbeat. I'm pretty happy. Um, headed from here to um, Dave Jenkins' new facility on Buell Road. We're putting finishing touches on that, and that's going to be up and operating by the first of the year. So um, that will hopefully be the seat of some of the personal training I, I plan to be doing in the year to come. And all of the uh, Rochester personal defense classroom activities now have a permanent home. So that, you know, we got the good stuff going. Growth. 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 Positive growth. Positive growth. You know, exactly. You mentioned the kettlebell. What was your heaviest kettlebell? What is your currently your heaviest? See, I usually work out with a 35, which in some circles is the starting point for men. Um, there's, yeah. there's a lot of caveats that go with that. You know, yeah, yeah. The, the kettlebell swing, and we, we're going to have to do a kettlebell tutorial here for one of our sessions. But I'll wear my bike helmet. The basic kettlebell swing not a problem when you start doing ballistic stuff where you know you're tossing and catching and, and doing some fancier things you go lighter so right now my workouts um, generally I use the 35 pounder for the single swing stuff and then I've got a pair of 20s that I do when I do two kettlebells um, I can go heavier than that and I really need something in the 45 to 52 pound range for my single and a couple of 30s for the other but yeah it's a good workout we'll get now, there now let's jump we'll jump over to the desalination plan um which is probably one of the bigger stories that we've covered this year sort of a year recap we're, yeah we're, we're heading towards now um you know the your feelings your passionate feelings about our president in this administration i would say runs parallel with my feelings about our governor yeah um we'll just well we'll, no you know you and i are pretty much on the same page as far as that that guy <laughs> that guy unfortunately yeah. yeah so you know uh you know with that desalination plant the way the whole the way the whole thing played out and went down uh livingston county was railroaded into this there's oh, yeah. there's no doubt about that and we're going to see what happens from here on which out. i think you get a uh, more of a feel of of how i took it when they passed the safe act with um you know completely against the will of all of the law enforcement in upstate new york yeah. against the will of all of the people outside of the new york city area and got that shoved down our throats i think what we have it, we're seeing from two very very different stories but we're seeing a man who is willing to be a complete tyrant uh, he stomps around wants his own way he doesn't really care what the will of the people is or what's good for the people 
He simply does what's expedient for him as a politician. On, on my Christmas wish list is a Democrat that runs against Cuomo in the primary. Now that'll be now, tough with the war chest that he's got. He does have a great war chest, but he's also really angered a lot of Democrats in his own party. And I think that all right, he's going to do well in New York City. Um, but I think as soon as you get out of the five boroughs, uh, and also there's a lot of voters in Long Island, if a Democrat came stepped up to the plate and challenged him on his party line, I think he'd have his hands full. I mean, he'll probably win, but. It's enough of there. Now, the other issue on that is if, um, you know, a conservative challenges, because that's going to hurt the Republican chances, the conservatives, the Republicans will split, and then Cuomo walks well, through with the win. on the Republican side in the state, I don't think you'll see a split between conservative and um, Republican like you did here in, on the sheriff's you okay. know, race. Unfortunately, and this is, the, this is just the bitter pill that we all have to swallow, is that you can just take the five boroughs – of New York and, and a couple of the counties there adjacent, and that's more population than all the rest of the state put together. And what I think we need to do, and we really need to look at this, and, and I'd like to see some sort of a coalition in areas of agreement actually between classic liberals and conservatives. Because, you know, the, a lot of the people that I look at today that are very, very conservative were people that back in the 60s were out there chanting and, and running around in the street carrying signs. And one of the things I'm afraid that the liberal side has lost is that fervor for individual freedom. Back then, everything was against the man and the establishment. And today, we have this enormous establishment that, unfortunately, I see a lot of liberals supporting. I, as a conservative, or actually, I call myself a conservative libertarian, I'm really away from that. I want, I want government... Oh, uh, you know that that burdenous burdensome government off my back, and I think we ought to agree on that and run together. And maybe get an independent in there. Very interesting. And the one thing that's for sure is that the conservatives are now our community activists. Uh, the Democrats, which you know, it's during the '60s and '70s and even the '80s, um, were sort of going with the label like they're the activists they're the one that want the change they're the one that you know are doing yeah. this but i'd have to say by the looks of it it's the conservative party that's now being more of an activist even on the county level with steve sessler in the da's race and then you, you look at what happened there and then you had Air, um under sheriff sesniak that ran on the conservative mm -hmm. line as well we're not seeing these activists and people taking on the institution and the laws that are being passed it's the conservative party that really is the activist party yeah. of the well, and, and of our nation interesting right thing that we've sort of gone full circle because if you go back to the days of thomas jefferson and what was considered a classical liberal okay that is the conservative platform Always yeah, very interesting. You always have a historical fact that you uh, you have to. You you send me to school on everyone. If, if uh, you know, as it was said by the philosopher Santayana, those who fail to learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. Right. And we need to be careful and understand. If you, I'll put it another way, Lewis Carroll, right, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, got that one. Okay. If you don't know where you're going. Any road will do. <laughs> right. That is that is correct. And uh, we have some big things. I mean, it's been a big year, like we're saying. Uh, we had uh, Mr. Tom Doherty. He's going to be yep. our next sheriff. We're going to be streaming that uh, ceremony yeah, live. Yeah, he gets sworn in another week and a half, right? That's correct. The 5th of January, I believe. Uh, 3rd. 3rd Very of quick. January down in Mount Morris. Um, we have what's going on with the Peregrine Safe and Ready. Now, um, taking a look at... You know, I was thinking here as I'm going by the salt mine, American rock salt. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is, I, I was telling you, I had something th I, on my plate here that yeah. we could talk about. I got it. Just clicked. Good. That 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 what you saw, folks, was a clicking if, if of an idea. If we ramble long enough, right. it all comes back. So so I was thinking, uh, you know, you, you talk about being prepared. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about the desalination plant. And, then, and I was thinking, man, if the you-know-what hits the fan, boy, wouldn't that salt mine, the former salt mine, be a good place to go if well if you want to live underground and you know uh, like mad max beyond salt. beyond thunder see i don't see i don't there. see a mad max scenario yeah coming, though, josh that would make is the stuff of good movies but right. but in reality when if the stuff hits the fan what i what what i fear you're the killing most, me i had this great i had oh, Tina turner on. on a cool car down in a salt mine yeah, well, she's and, got she's aged a lot since yeah. that last one yeah probably not um, gonna look the same now nah, you're gonna get somebody else <laughs> but um 
you know, you run around in a mine Miley for very Cyrus. long, we'll you're not going to get Cyrus. much fresh fresh water down there, and pretty soon everybody's going to be dying of rickets for lack of sunlight. Right. What I what I see happening with America, and what I think there's a good lead in for this. People ought to be thinking in terms of personal preparedness in the year to come, and not in a crazy way. Okay, I don't think we need to go back like in the Cold War and build a bunch of fallout shelters. The extreme case isn't what I look for. What I look for is what other countries have experienced. When other countries print a lot of money, like we are with quantitative right. easing, and it, we're now into QE3. The the What's QE3? QE3 is quantitative easing. It's the third phase of it. Okay. And basically, we're pumping $85 billion a month, which is over a trillion dollars a year, of manufactured money. The Federal Reserve is just creating that much more money than is actually in circulation at any given time. I mean, I knew that. And I just wanted, in pumping, case everybody else didn't know what QE2 Pumping was. that into the banking system. Okay. It's only going into two places. It's, it's going into the banks, which are in turn using it to prop up Wall Street, which right. is why we're seeing these great returns from the Dow and from the S&P 500, but the average person's not feeling that. And the bankers are getting richer and richer and richer, the other, the other half of that money that they're spending is going directly into buying up our government savings bonds, which is how we float our debt. Our, our government spends a dollar and forty cents for every dollar it takes in in revenue, and they make up that forty cents by selling bonds. With the interest rate near zero, nobody wants to buy the bonds, so the Fed is buying the bonds, but they're doing it with money that they're creating out of nothing. Now, if you and I did that, they'd call it counterfeiting, and we'd go to jail. Right, but the Federal Reserve can do that because they're just uh, they're bigger than too big to fail. Eventually, at least from a historical perspective, a system like that implodes, and people at some point recognize that this money really isn't worth anything. And we're seeing that now with inflation. Uh, the inflation numbers are much higher than the government numbers that they're putting out. So, so to to go back to what do we do as as individuals in a situation like this? And one of the things that I think people ought to do, think very, very long and hard about, is keeping cash on hand. Because what typically happens when, when things get really bad is they'll declare a bank holiday. When they declare a bank holiday, the banks close. No transactions are allowed for a period of two, three, four, five weeks, whatever. In Argentina, it was a six week period. That's right. When the banks reopened, people found two things. One is that their money had been devalued by a factor of four. Right. So what was worth a dollar the day that it closed was worth a quarter the day that it reopened. The other thing that they found was that they were limited in the amount of the withdrawals that they were allowed. So they were only allowed to take 200 pesos a month out of the bank. Right. I was uh, living in South America when that okay. went down. Alright. So very few Americans knew that that happened because it was right after 9-11 here. Right. And paid no attention. Very, very difficult times for the people in Argentina. And it's just you saw crime go up, law enforcement went down. Utility became very undependable unless you were in the best neighborhoods. Right. Um, you know, the, the roads weren't taken care of, the police didn't respond to calls. Kind of like what we're seeing in cities like Detroit right now as we speak in Oakland, California, and other places that are in financial difficulty. And I think people need to be physically fit. People need to be healthy. Look, look Obamacare is going to, going to ruin health care in America. And health care isn't dependent on insurance anyways. That's just how you pay for it. But, but what's happening is it's our, our ability to get to medical professionals, and it's driving medical professionals out of the profession so there's going to be less doctors for everybody. So the best thing to do is not need a doctor. The right. best thing to do is to be fit and able to handle stress in any form that comes along, have a strong immune system, be physically ready to defend yourself if you need to, because because I expect the crime rate actually has, has done a little bit of an uptick lately. Um, have enough stuff on hand, just like what the Red Cross and FEMA recommends, be ready for a, a few days of power outage or be ready, just like you'd be ready for a flood or a bad snowstorm or an ice storm or something. Have enough uh, storable food around and some, some water, you know, the means to, to heat yourself, whether it's a, a portable heater or a wood stove or something like that, whatever you can, you can do. Have some candles, have flashlights, all the smart things that our parents knew. Right. And, you know, and then don't worry. All right. Put the worry away. On that note, I think we'll wrap it up. This is episode 11. I want to thank one of our sponsors, 
speaking of heat, Turnbull Heating uh, in Batavia. They also have our offices in Avon. They're one of the great sponsors here at the Genesee Sun. I got to give you, them Turnbull. a shout. And uh, as well as uh, Fred, I want to thank you for taking the time to come in here. And, hey, my um, pleasure. And you know how much I enjoy doing yeah, this. Yeah, it's great. I think we've gotten, uh, we're starting to get this down pretty well. This is episode 11. You can find these episodes on Fred's YouTube channel and as yep. well as he's on a, he has a nice Facebook page or social media, right? Yeah. Yep. What else we got here? And well, I've also how got to get a, a hold website. Of you. Yeah, how to get uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you for your yeah. self defense, firearm training, workout, um, your your political rants. What else do we miss? The political you? rants will will leave on the program here. Uh-huh. Um, but if you want to get a hold of me to schedule personal training or nutritional counseling or uh, the firearms instruction, you can go to my website, which is www.peregrinsafeandready, all one word, dot com. Or you can call me at area code 585-447-0357. All right, Fred. Uh, have a great holiday. Thanks And so you much. do the same, Happy Josh. Yeah. And good running. All right.